Hello? Hey, do you want to see Baby Driver today? Ah, uh, nah man, I've already seen it. I'm actually about to do my review right now. Do you want to just come over and hang out then? Nah, I really just want to get this review done. Ah, uh, I've got Diet Coke. Did you say... Diet Coke? I'll be there in three minutes. Three? But I live 20 minutes away. Hello? Not again. Sorry, I've only got normal coke. Baby Driver centers around an incredibly skilled young getaway driver called Baby, played by Ansel Elgort. He owes a debt to Kevin Spacey's crime boss and pays it off by being the driver of choice for heists carried out by Spacey's crews. But Baby wants out, and when he meets and falls for local waitress Deborah, it's time for him to drive faster and smarter than ever before. Baby Driver is the latest film from Edgar Wright and his first in four years after his directing of Ant-Man fell through. I was gutted about not seeing an Edgar Wright Hill Marvel movie, but if that expedited the process of getting Baby Driver made, then maybe it's for the best because OFF! This is good! And speaking of Marvel, take note of Spider-Man Homecoming. That is how you make a floaty heads poster. Wait, someone actually approved that? Oh my god. Baby Driver is probably the film I've been looking forward to the most for a long time. Edgar Wright is one of my absolute favourite writer-directors. I love his highly energetic style and the sheer fun that he infuses into every one of his films. It's the exact kind of style that is right up my street. I've always thought if I ever got to make a movie, it'd be like a really crap Edgar Wright film. A really crap one. Don't for a second think I'm comparing what you saw at the beginning to anything that Edgar Wright would do, alright? I've got no money, no equipment and no talent. Wright made Shaun of the Dead. This time he's putting his skills to use in a driving movie so you know the energy and the action are getting boosted to new highs. The movie kicks off with the high octane, ridiculously pumped up getaway set to bell bottoms by the John Spencer Blues explosion. Which you might think would mean it can only go downhill from there but no, it opens full throttle and then does not let up. Baby Driver is constant excitement and so much fun from the very beginning right through to the end. The main way this film feels exciting and really what makes it stand out the most is that almost everything is perfectly synced to a killer soundtrack. Things like character movements and gunshots are timed as such that they happen at the exact moment, say, a drum hit occurs in the song. The direction, choreography and editing are incredible. It's like an extended version of that pool cue bashing scene in Shaun of the Dead, but one that lasts for two hours. The perfect example of this is a very early on scene in which Baby walks to and from a coffee shop where he listens to Harlem Shuffle and in one long, continuous take, he steps perfectly to the beat and walks by things in the scene that spell out key lyrics of the song as they happen. And for the most part, as far as I could tell, whenever there was a song playing, what we were seeing on the screen was cut and paced in a way that it did sync up with what was going on in the soundtrack. It made the movie so fun and I know I'm going to be repeating myself a 
lot, but I just want to hammer home the point that this film is so enjoyable to watch. Editing to the music is all well and good, but if the soundtrack that dominates your film isn't very good, then it's going to be a bit of a slog to get through. Luckily though, the idea for Baby Driver has been gestating in Edgar Wright's head for 22 years, so that's plenty of time to pick out a phenomenal soundtrack. To be fair though, I'd fall for any soundtrack that has Hocus Pocus by Focus in it, and if you don't know what Hocus Pocus is, it is the most over the top, batshit mental but absolutely glorious prog rock song with all the yodeling in it. And if you'd like to join in, I've taken the liberty of transcribing the lyrics. See if you can sing along. <laughs> really is more than just a soundtrack and I know this is going to sound cheesy, please forgive me, but it feels more like a co-star. Cool oh no, you didn't just say that, <laughs> you didn't shut it. It's intertwined with every element of the movie and the story, it feels personal to Baby, it feels personal to Edgar Wright, it's even named after a Simon and Garfunkel song which plays over the end credits and that to me feels like the essence of the movie right there. You can see the jukebox style of say, the Blues Brothers shining through and it heightens that sense of the movie being this wild riot of sensory overload. The cast all do a fantastic job here. The crew feel like GTA characters come to life. Ansel Elgort isn't an actor I'm too familiar with. Apart from a cameo in Paper Towns, the only other thing I've seen him in is The Fault in Our Stars. Links below, shameless plug, let's move on. But he actually made for a brilliant choice to play the titular role. He is believable as the absurdly talented driver, but also genuinely conveys being a kind-hearted guy who just happens to find himself on the wrong side of the law, which is just as well as a movie as brazenly aware of its own coolness as this could easily be cringy with the wrong lead. The assortment of psychopaths around them all feel excellently cast too. Kevin Spacey and Jamie Foxx bring their Oscar winning talents to the villainy of the movie, with Foxx especially being a comical standout. John Hamm rounds out the men as Buddy, who is probably my favourite character, and along with Isaac Gonzalez, the two of them make up what must be the most attractive movie couple in years and one of the coolest modern Bonnie and Clyde archetypes for a long time. Lily James plays a love interest Deborah, and again, I wasn't too familiar with her as the only other thing I'd seen her in was the Branagh Theatre Live Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, that's right, I have some culture. Just kidding, I walked past the poster a couple of times. You didn't believe that for a second, did you? If I have any complaints about Baby Driver, it's that maybe I didn't quite buy how quickly the relationship between Deborah and Baby develops, but even then, that's me reaching and in no way actually detracts from the experience of the film. Because even though this is an action film, a car film, a chase film, whatever you want to call it, it's still distinctly an Edgar Wright film. It's a cookie nutty, e-numbered up love letter to action cinema and you can clearly see the influences of the classics like The French Connection and The Driver all mixed in with Wright's trademark snappy dialogue and sense of humour, all wrapped around the beaten heart of an impeccable soundtrack. Baby Driver is an easy five popcorns. It's a breath of fresh air in a summer season crowded with sequels and mega franchises. In what I can really only describe as an action musical, Wright has somehow come up with this thing that is hilarious in parts, thrilling in others, but always dazzling in its rhythmic execution. It's perfect summer movie fun. Go see it on the big screen. Thanks very much for watching my review of Baby Driver. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and if you could share this video with a friend, that would be hugely, hugely appreciated. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. You can click that box to see my latest video and you can click that box there for a playlist of all my latest reviews. So again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.